Coping is something that we all know how to do, but we could almost all be better at. Coping is just one option we have in terms of reactions we can have to stress. We can also do a lot of other sort of negative behaviors, but coping tends to be something that can have positive outcomes for us in reducing our stress and improving our well-being. There are four primary types of coping. The first is problem-focused coping. This is where the coping behaviors themselves work on the problem at hand. So they work to change the problem that's causing the stress. So whatever the problem is, thinking about what might actually solve that, right? So if it's an overwhelm at work, too many tasks to do, it might be sitting down, writing down all of the tasks, figuring out when in your schedule you can complete them or figuring out which things might be able to be delegated to others. That would be problem-focused coping. The second type of coping is emotion-focused coping. And this is really about reducing negative emotions around the stressor. So this could be something like um, watching a funny movie to sort of take your mind away from what's going on. It could be uh, baking and eating something that you love that makes you feel better, albeit maybe temporarily. It could be doing yoga to reduce stress levels and improve that emotional state. There's a lot of negative things we can do that are emotion-focused coping as well. Things like drinking or turning to other substances, um, which may be okay in small doses, but in the end don't do much to solve our problems. The third type of coping is meaning-focused coping. And this, instead of working on the problem itself, like problem-focused coping or trying to improve our emotional state, like emotion-focused coping, Meaning-focused coping is changing how we think about the problem or the stressor, right? Changing the meaning around it, right? So in my earlier example about being stressed out, about having too much to do at work and needing to cope with that, we could change the way we think about that long list of to-dos. We could think of them as opportunities. We could think of um, how grateful we are to have this job. But it's really about reframing and sort of managing the problem by changing the meaning that we hold for the, the stressor or the problem itself. The fourth type of coping is relationship focused coping. And this is when couples or families or friends manage the stress of a problem along with the emotional needs of the person who's coping, right? So this could be reaching out to other people for help with coping. This could be other people reaching out to you when they notice that you need help um, or are especially stressed. Um, so kind of doing this together and doing things um, as a pair or as a group to reduce those negative feelings. There's another type of coping that's really closely related to relationship-focused coping, and that's called communal coping. This is a concept that comes out of the field of communication specifically and captures what happens when couples or families or groups, could even be a community, see a problem as shared. So communal coping means the problem is communal. It's community-based or um, among the couple. Uh, and it really takes the burden off the person that's experiencing the stressor. So you can think about, especially in times when there's something going on that an entire group of people needs to face. So like a natural disaster that's um, you know, wildfire in a community or um, the COVID-19 pandemic is a good example too, where people engage in communal coping. So coping together as a group and sharing the stressor, which means then that the solutions can also be shared and brainstormed and kind of crowdsourced. So this is different um, than just simple social support or one of those individual types of coping because it requires coordination among people. So it's different from a relationship focused coping because that might be like a friend sort of helping out when you're stressed, whereas communal coping is saying, this is our problem and we're gonna work on it together. It really takes the, the burden off that individual person, which can help reduce stress levels right away. Communal coping has been linked to security, resilience, and efficacy, which is this idea that we can do things for ourselves and make things happen. And these things can buffer the effects of stress.